Hello there. Only one Kenobi here. Only one. So I had a crack of filming uh, Rogue One just before. I'm going to do this on the same day I did the Rogue One video. Check that out. I'll leave a link to the whole series of Shelf Indulgence, which is like me touring this room, you know, order by order, you know, like film by film, you know. Episodes one to six I've done so far. I've done Clone Wars. I've done Rogue One. Now I want to turn my attention to Solo. Before we do that, let's have a look at this great ship here. Millennium Falcon, yeah, I've got two of them. I've got one up on the wall. This is the best in terms of how it looks on the outside with the weathering that they did on this one. It doesn't, uh, it's not without its problems, this vehicle, because I had a hell of a lot of trouble with this a year ago. Faults and all sorts, so I had to have it replaced. And things don't click into place quite so well, so it's obviously a remold or cast or whatever, I don't know what you call it, but still, that's a great one up there. Very reliable, the Legacy Collection one. The Galaxy's Edge one was nice if you, uh, you know, wanted to get your hands on a Falcon. But still, why am I filming this? I suppose I'm about to talk about Solo. And my dream was that they re that they put out the Solo one in this scale. Because I loved how it looked in Solo. In fact, I've got it up here. This was the Kessel Run one. Uh, and it's, you know, it looked great. The reason I've got it there, I've just added these recently just because they were in the way. Power of the Force 2 stuff. Um, because it fitted into the same scale as this thing from Star Tours here. Look at the size of the R2 there. It's just Boba Fett randomly there. And then in the background, you'll notice that I've got a Micro Machines thing, Anakin Starfighter with an R2 in it, and that's the same size as the one that's on the top of this. So I think in a roundabout way, I don't know what scale you call that, but it's uh, pretty much the scale for, yeah, I suppose the Action Fleety style E, I guess. So that's why I put that up here with these because it would not work anywhere else. I like things in scale, that's why I don't have six inch vehicles in here, or figures, I have everything in three and three quarter inch, except the top of the Donkey Kong machine, which is, le I'm gonna be getting rid of that soon. I'm gonna be moving it out of here, as I've discussed, I'm gonna be putting this Detolf in that space there, and I can have more shelves extended here, and blah de blah. Anyway, let's move on. So I'm gonna do Solo next. It's before I go down, let's have another look at the, uh, let's have another look at the Millennium Falcon. There it is, great, great vehicle. And people always ask me, how did you get it on there? Well, I'll show you now. I thought it was pretty obvious how I did it, but maybe not because of the angles of the camera. But there, all it is is it's just two brackets, two shelf brackets. My shelves are not like that anyway. I use floating shelves. So they've got steel rods inside. But that's, you know, the classic bracket on the wall and put them on there. It's not my idea. I saw a guy on Facebook doing that and I thought I'd nick it. You can also use guitar stands and stuff on the floor, but I like to see them in flight going sideways on like that's awesome let's go down and have a look at solo boom this is all i have so it starts off with the um it might be very dusty down here people do say to me how about how how do you deal with dust i don't dust these shelves if i move figures i'll dust them but i've noticed the bottom rows always are dustier which is to be expected if you walk in and dust gets kicked up this is a vehicle well worth getting the front crushes as well it crashes it's got like a look at that Oh God, sorry Han, <laughs> sorry buddy. Whoa, what's her name? Kira, Kira, you and I will be spending more time together. What's he say? We'll be working together more closely from now on anyway. These are two good figures as well as Kira there and Han. Young Han, which does come with this vehicle. It's a lovely speeder. Would have been great if they put it in TVC a bit more weathering and stuff, but you know, as a bog standard vehicle goes, it's okay. I'll show you what I've got pulled right out, basically. I've just clustered them together. This isn't a floating shelf like uh, these. This is a spare box piece of wood that came from something that was an old guitar case. Uh, actually, a guitar pedal box that I've just painted white. I might get rid of it soon, but it's got depth to it, so I, um, excuse me. Yeah, it's got depth to it, so I've got lots of figures sort of in a tighter cluster. This is the best way I could do the chronology. This would be the effect, effectively the spaceport where they leave Corellia, and then you've got that random officer there. They're in a spaceport, so that luggage I just sort of put there. Morlock or whatever his name is, I'll move him over that way a bit more. 
Then you've got the range troopers there, of course. So it kind of follows a chronology, sort of, I guess, of that movie. Stuff dropping all over the place. Bit of an army build of these mud troopers here now. And of course, you've got Han there in the army. Behind Han, when he first meets Chewie, covered in mud. See, it's quite interesting. You could get these figures so cheap. Because by that time, there was a lot of damage done. They'd made some good figures in this line, and you, they were giving these away like they were the Last Jedi stuff, except this was a much better film, I thought. More Star Wars. More Star wars -y. And so it was more than five POA. They looked the articulation and there were some good figures. Again, I would prefer them all to be super articulated like him and her, but still, they were still good figures and at least we got them. You didn't get much for Rise of Skywalker because, you know, they only really gave you a few people, key characters in, in TVC, which would have sold because we hadn't seen the film by then and, you know, Triple Force Fridays and such sell, sell figures. And obviously there wasn't a lot of figures for, for the uh, last uh, um, Rise of Skywalker because... At the end of the day, look how rare that ray is. Anyway, so there's that. Quite good, I like that little mock-up there of um, Mimban. And over here we've got the crew. Great character, Samuel Beckett. Samuel Beckett, my God, what am I thinking of? Quantum Leap, <laughs> Tobias Beckett. Rio. And then you've got Han Solo there, which is great. I did have that figure on my barge not long ago. I had this mocked up for just the period of time when Jabba the Hutt putting together a crew. I know a big time gangster on Tatooine. He's blatantly talking about Jabba the Hutt, isn't he? And you've got that guy from Kessel. Really, that guard should be closer to him to cluster him together. And then you've got, again, Chewie and Han in the back. Very much a Kessel vibe there with the uh, coaxium there. And then again, you know, K2, not K2SO, L3, L3! She is a great looking fit. I wish she could be articulated. That's sitting in the cockpit of the Falcon. Like Dash Randar's droid as well. Somebody must have looked in the archives for that. And then of course, that is it. That's it for Solo. Oh no. There she is. I had her just between a segue between Rebels era. Because she is of course the start of a faction of the rebels. I mean, the Rebel Alliance goes back all the way to Mon Mothma. Where are you, Manny? Where's Mon Mothma? Oh, I've moved her. I used to have her on this shelf here. You know, the fall of the uh, Republic. And that's Revenge of the Sith stuff. I put Mon Mothma... God, I can't remember. Oh, I put her up here with the politicians, I think. Is she in there somewhere? Yes, there she is. That's the seeds of the Rebel Alliance. But it's nice to think that even in Rogue One, it's discussed and explored the fact that you've got factions of the rebels. You know, you've got people who are extremists and more diplomatic people and people who are technically you know, terrorists, given the status quo, the uh, Empire is in charge. Um, although they are a dictatorship and they're fighting for freedom. This is uh, Emphis Nest, great figure. I do have Enfist on a swoop bike as well, but it didn't quite work down there. I'd like to have her flying. I think it's, yeah, she's just underneath the barge. I've got a lot of junk under there. Look at the state of that. Look at that mess. <laughs> That's miscellaneous stuff yet to be displayed, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move into Rebels. So here we have, of course, Darth Vader with the Ralph Macquarie tip of the hat. You've got, of course, Grand Admiral Thrawn, who I am overjoyed to own as a figure, but I don't want him like that. I want a realistic one, which we could have and should have got in the vintage collection. If they'd repacked the Legacy Comic Pack 1, um, and then I'd have him, you know, amongst all these other great figures somewhere, you know. But, unfortunately, that's all I have. I'd love to see him out as a proper figure again. They will do it. They can, and they should. You've got the brothers here. You've got the, sorry, the um, in, uh, Inquisitors, I beg your pardon. I only have one of him. I'm glad I have it. I don't know what the value is of him now, but I bought it for nothing in the uh, Saga Legends line of the Rebel figures in 2015. There were some good figures in that. The animated one's not so good, but then you've got really good figures like the Atat driver. I can't be bothered getting up. I'm going to zoom in on him. There he is. Right there. That's a great figure. The Rebels line. Um, hang on. What are we doing? There you go. Back to normal. Sorry about that. Dodgy camera work. 
And then, of course, we've got Ahsoka, who I didn't like in Rebels. I didn't like how she looked. I loved how she looked, played by Rosario Dawson. But I just didn't think she aged correctly. I didn't think her face would have gone so gaunt. I know people change and they metamorphosize with age, but I didn't expect her to look quite like that. But then when you see her in Mando, she seems right, if that makes sense. And then this is the Rebels crew. You've got, of course, at the back, Zeb. And you've got, of course, Rex. Um... And interjection. I'm just cutting in there. I'm just in the middle of editing this latest episode of Shelf Indulgence. And I've got to do something about this. I don't know why I didn't notice when I was filming it, but why are these two stood next to each other? A little bit of OCD is kicking in here, folks. This is the way I have them clustered. I usually have these two stood side by side. I like that. Master and Apprentice. He was just, he was doing my editing. I was editing and then he was stood next to Vader and Thrawn. I was like, what am I doing? So, yeah, so I've moved that now and I'll give you another tour in a second. Yeah, speaking of Master and Apprentice, like this vibe here. Love it. Like that right there. Love it. And of course it goes back to that. Mm -hmm. And then you've got uh, Rex, of course. I very nearly said Zeb Seneska there, but that's Zeb, isn't it? He's Zeb, isn't he, right? I can't remember, I don't know. Then you've got, of course, Sabine Wren. I do have the figure of her with the removable helmet, but I've got that packaging. I never opened it. It's a tight cluster, this. As I say, I've got depth, so I go down that way, as opposed to across with depth going down that away. Still, you've got the bad guys, kind of, yeah, without her. Yeah, she's a good guy, actually, but you know what I mean? Bad guys and the good guys. There you go, that's uh, Sabine. And then, of course, in the front, you've got our man, Ezra Bridger. I quite liked him with the longer hair, to be honest. I prefer his look like that. And then there he is there. Jarris. And then of course, da, 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 da. I quite like him, Chopper. He's quite an interesting character. I quite like Rebels, actually. It's all right, um, except uh, I've been dragging my way through it. I still haven't got onto series four yet. There's, a, there's some stuff I like, there's some stuff I'm not so keen on. It's like, it's not gripping me. It's like taking a medicine or something. I have to force myself to sit down and watch it. But having said that, loads of people I know are saying, stick with it, stay with it. And three and four have been a lot better. I remember like in season one, when that first came out, that was 2015, I sat and watched that. I was enjoying it. And then on a rewatch of that, and then season two, I didn't really dig it, but it's all right. I prefer the Clone Wars, to be honest. Anyway. So we go back to the normal timeline of where I was first filming this episode. But, um, yeah. Anyway, there it is. That looks quite nice. So basically what I've got here is just like, it's like a movie poster, you know? And with that bit more depth, I can have people in the back. So I don't have to go across as much. I go across with all these other displays. Stretch them. With this, I can go deep because of this uh, one-off bottom board here. But the thing is, the plan is going to be this. I'm going to have wider shelves here. These are 80 centimeters. I'm gonna have 120 ones going across. And where the barge used to be parked here, I'm gonna go across and have more ones going lower down. So I'll have enough space there for Rebels, Expanded Universe. I might even be tempted to bring my Clone Wars stuff over there, but at the minute, Clone Wars is here. In fact, actually, I tell a lie. What I might do is I might, yeah, well, whatever, you know, I might, Keep that there, because I do like the fact that that's chrono 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 I can't even bloody speak. Chronological. Attack of the Clones, Clone Wars, Revenge of the Sith. But I'd like a bit more space for Clone Wars, you see, because it's all packed on one shelf, Clone Wars. Check out these videos again, you know. It's all there. Anyway, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've kept up with me and uh, enjoyed that video. It's just a bit of a quick tour that not as much to see, but, you know, that's, that's it for now. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be more shelf tours, I'm sure. With everything I do when I go and open something like I'm going to be opening this soon, I'll give you another closer look at some of the creature shells, which are over here with my Mandalorian slash Bantha set up there. This is like the wild Tatooine right there, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of species and creatures associated with Tatooine. Awesome. Thank you very much for watching. I have been Only One Kenobi, Only One. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Tap the notification bell so you can catch up with the rest of any videos and series of this series and any other videos. I'm going to shut up now because I'm blabbering on. This has been Only One Kenobi. Only One. Out. <laughs>